Hello everyone, we're continuing the Dallas interview series with Laya from M80. And I wanted to start, Laya, by asking you, you've had Pelican and Happy over for a while now. What's the sort of biggest difference to the team and the atmosphere since they've, since they've come over? Um, well, I think that them being here is just like way more camaraderie. We're like much more of a team now instead of like playing when they're playing in Korea on like 200 something ping and like they don't know like they didn't know me I mean they probably knew UV and stuff but I've actually gone like really really close with the Koreans um and yeah I think them being here just like it's a lot easier for them to play on low ping and like be here but I think it just like gave an overall boost to the team when they got here and then as we get closer to Dallas itself, has your preparation changed much from maybe your normal schedule in this sort of last week or so? Um, I would say no. It's actually been like kind of harder to find like scrims because um, the teams that aren't in Dallas are not really like scrimming or at least us because they don't want to scrim the Dallas map pool and like that's all we want to practice for. So it's kind of harder like getting like some filler blocks in. But um, I'd say, like, I mean, outside of, like, maybe playing ranked a little bit more, I mean, still playing ranked, still scrimming, like, four hours a day and, like, doing some review, like, uh, with the team and then on your own. Uh, I can't speak for everybody, but it feels, like, sort of similar, but outside, like, the scrims. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about the scrims, because obviously, as most people know, the Korean teams have made their way over early to make sure they can get their practice in, which actually means a good amount of the teams going to Dallas have all scrimmed each other so far. I think there was a bit of sentiment from some people when the Koreans were coming back from this tournament that it would be Overwatch League all over again. They just come back and dominate them. Is that the impression you've got since having the chance to play against the actual teams you'll play against, or are they more beatable than maybe some people think? Um, I mean, I haven't gone to Scrim Raccoons because we're obviously playing them round one. Um, but we've been scrimming Falcons a lot. And they're obviously a very, very good team. Um, I definitely think that they are like beatable. I don't think this is like Overwatch League, um, like Atlanta Rain, Florida Mayhem, Houston Outlaws type of dominance yet. But I I I think I'd be lying to myself to say like they're not a very good team, but I I do think that they're beatable. Um, again, I can't really speak for raccoons, but at least for falcons, I definitely think that they they can be beaten. And in general, we we've seen the meta sort of shifting a little bit in face it the games that we've seen. We've seen more Malga, obviously a lot more Farah from teams like yourselves, a lot more Venture. Do you feel like the, this sort of variety is a strength for you guys, or it's a good situation for you to find yourselves in? Um, yeah. So this meta has been like kind of weird because. At first, I would have said there's like a lot of diversity, and then like two days ago, everyone was playing MAGA, and then like yesterday, like people are, are back to the diversity. So it's a little bit weird. I think it, it's just a case by case, uh, like which team plays what. Um, for us, I mean, I definitely think that we have a pretty flexible team, but sometimes it's kind of like annoying just not getting to like play like one or two comps and like get better at it and just like having to play something new every day so i'd say that we're pretty quick at adapting but um yes yeah, meta this meta is kind of weird yeah it feels like we're seeing more and more sort of niche picks either for certain maps or certain things or we even yeah. saw it in some of like the emea games for just would pull out like a Malga venture if they were struggling in certain situations and it seems to be a lot of teams having to fix stuff on the fly or be ready for one of the five different comps they have in store yeah and i wanted to ask maybe you specifically because i think probably a lot of people are giving your team credit for the Farrah craze that seems to be going around <laughs> yeah. so we saw it maybe i guess the debut was against toronto itself and then since then we've seen ents have been doing it We've seen Stalker playing loads of Farrah on stream, so maybe it's made its way all the way around the world. How did that come about? Was it an idea you planned out, or did it just happen one day, or how did... Uh, what was the origin story? So, this literally all started with Happy just 
locking it in ranked. <laughs> like he like and I'm gonna say this, I think it's just like he was trolling and like Happy started playing it, and then like Happy would play Pelly in ranked and Happy would beat him, and then Pelly would start playing it, and then one day we just get into scrims and Pelly's like, I'm playing Farah, and I'm like, What are we smoking? This hero is horrible. And then we just started doing good on it, and I was just like, Maybe Farah is good. And I think like if you gave people a lot of time, um, the Farah pick is probably not as good as it is, but like Farah is hard to deal with. Like you can see that from uh, Yazan having twelve accounts in the top twelve. <laughs> so I think Farah's just kind of like uh, against like worse teams. Like I think the Farah pick is a lot better because um, it's just kind of hard to deal with. <sighs> On it being like good, like some days I think it's good, and then some days I think like can we just like go trace or something like let's go like <laughs> uh like some heroes because he, when you play Farah, it's kind of hard to like like let's say if we wanted to play bat for example like it's kind of hard to play bat and Farah together because my my Farah kind of has to play ground Farah. so i think it really just depends on like the map and like who we're playing against um i mean i'll say like we you, we were playing like Fera 100% everywhere. We've definitely like started to play a little bit less, but I still think you might see a little bit at, at, at uh, Dallas. Maybe pull it out against the the crazy raccoons. No, I think I think that that kind of sounds very much the impression. I remember watching it for the first time and being like, "What's going on? Is he really locking Fera? I guess so." And then the more I watched it, I think especially that mecha base against Toronto, I was like, "Oh, this is horrible for Sugar Free. His life is." so difficult not trying to get one shot or not have his recall forced and i think obviously yeah. a lot of people are cottoned onto that as well and especially some of these maps um it like was at your recent series against tsm on like oasis gardens where pelican can just play coast and i was like yeah. this is just obnoxious you can't get rid of yeah. him. <laughs> he's just here yeah. the entire time i don't know like uh, yeah like it's just on some maps i think it's very very good um but on others i think like like you said it's just sometimes you just need the map to like favor you so if if it, if it can for pharaoh um i think it's good but if it if it doesn't then i don't think it's good yeah yeah i think that's fair i also think pelly's just trying to have fun like <laughs> uh, like <laughs> pelly's just he's he's just like that he wants to have fun and i think he's having fun on the hero which he also thinks is good yeah, well, he's also very good at it as well. Like some of it, when I was watching it, I was like, I don't know if Farah's good here, but it is if you hit these rockets across the map, then it's good. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask you a little bit about maps as well, because we're obviously getting a new pick system coming in for Dallas, which is for one that the Asia teams have been using, where the loser gets to pick the mode and the map. So how do you feel about this system coming in? Um. Well, it's... I'm I'm kind of like unsure of how I think about it because if we had more time with this, if we played with this, I would probably say I have no problem with it. So we could have like prepped, but like they didn't tell us this stuff until like really, really late. And I think that it's obviously like a huge advantage to the loser team. Um but it's also weird because like we've been playing, we've been going cost to what hybrid, then to like uh, flashpoint push and then escort, and now you're telling me we can go cough and then right into a push or like right into an escort. Like it kind of changes the the pace of the game. Like, um, let's say you have like a really really good map type, and you lose. You can just pick that map type and then you're right back in the series. So I think it probably makes it more competitive, but it also makes it uh, harder to like prep because you're having to like practice so many maps now because you can't like ban them. I think especially when you then factor in the nature of any knockout tournament is you're going to play a lot of high caliber teams in a short space of time, which means yeah. you don't might not only need to prepare like a Gibraltar, but you might need to. Oh, what if? Crazy Raccoons might pick it versus us. Falcons might pick it. Ents pick it. So we've got to maybe be ready for a few different comps on this map as well. And it really puts a lot of pressure on getting ready for everything in time. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be honest. I don't think we scrunch Gibraltar once. Like, we know that's uh, 
Crazy Raccoon's pick. Like, mm, yeah. like, listen, if they pick it, be my guest. Have the map. Like, the, like, <laughs> well, like let's just go next map. We're not even gonna play it. Get our mentals around. Like, just go next map. Yeah, well, I, I guess what we'll probably see is it, and it's a bit of what we saw in the Asia land, is it, it really resets momentum because you're just like, okay, we won the first map, but now we're going to have to play a really difficult map for us, but then we'll get to play a really good map for us, and it comes a little bit more like back and forth. Yeah, so if you win first map... Mm-hmm. So technically speaking, you winning first map is the advantage because really then you important. get more map. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because then if you just win your map picks, you win the series if you win first map. Yes. And that maybe leads on to maybe one of the bits that's been less discussed because everyone's talked a lot about the, the loser pick system. Mm-hmm. But as such, there's always this problem of who picks the first map then. And they've just done predetermined control maps for all the teams uh, yeah. until, we get to a, until we get to a sort of upper bracket, lower bracket stage of a tournament. How yeah. do you feel then about this kind of element of RNG in this predetermined map being thrown in? So I definitely think that it's kind of weird that at least the like the higher seed doesn't pick uh the cough map but at the same time like at least we do know in advance so both teams get to practice the map and like if both teams have the chance to practice the map then whoever wins the map was just the better like the, the, the better team yeah the better prepared team and they deserve to win that map um so like Obviously, like, for example, if I got stuck on, like, Ilios, like, Ilios is my least favorite cough map. I don't like it. And, like, it's probably one of my worst. But, like, let's say if I had, like, a week to prepare against Crazy Raccoons, like, at least we have a week to prepare on the map. Mm, Like, you can do, that's a lot, like, you're probably going to be scrimming that map at least twice a day. You can review it. Like, you can learn a lot and, and prepare for it. But... I mean, it's definitely, like I said, like they're implementing the system from Korea and like that is not what us or Europe have been playing on. So I think that they probably shouldn't have done it for this tournament or at least like gave us a like big notice or at least let us uh, have that system before. But we'll see. Maybe maybe it works out well. Maybe it doesn't. Um, Can't really say yet. Yeah, I, th- I think at least in theory it should be more interesting for series because we'll see more traded maps and such. Um, but how it actually works out in terms of like the teams themselves, because it, it changes your preparation massively, right? Because if you have the bands, like you have having face it and you have had an OWCS so far, you can really focus down yeah. your practice massively to, oh, we don't need to worry. Okay, oh, it's Parisios in the map pool, but it's okay. We're not planning to play dive, so we'll just never play that map. Really, no problem. Um, Whereas yeah. now you're going to be forced to a lot more uncomfortable situations. Yeah, like when we don't have a map we want to play, like when we load up into a scrim against a team that wants to play, like I can't even think of like a map. Like Parizo, honestly, was up there. Like at first, if anyone wanted to scrim Parizo, we said, we are banning that map. Yeah. We are not playing it. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. We're like, we're not going to scrim it. We're not playing it. It's going to be bad practice for both of us. Like, just, just do a different map um so yeah i mean having to prepare all these maps i mean okay i'm not even gonna say like preparing for all these maps like like you said for gibraltar like we know crazy raccoons is gonna play it we are not bothering scrimming that map like it it, like like if we happen to play it hey we're gonna try our best but like i i would say folk have like your map picks and then like if you have intel on what they're gonna play or have an idea then scrim those maps but i think trying to scrim to prep is a wrong way of scrimming like you need to scrim the maps that you feel like you're good at first yeah well i think that it becomes like a bit of a strategic choice in terms of oh okay if we know they're gonna pick a certain map because they think we're weak at it do we put loads of effort in the week into preparing for that map on a map that's going to be difficult for us? Or do we just make sure we nail our map picks? You yeah. know, and then we focus on those ones and maybe there's a couple of in the middle, in the balance type maps to go for. But I think, yeah, it, it does offer like a new a new element to it. That will be interesting to see. Yep. I wanted to ask you as well, when are you guys, we know some of the Korean teams have made their way out early. When are, when are you guys all heading down there? So M80, we are getting there tonight. 
Uh, this is being recorded on the Wednesday, 29th. Wednesday, yeah. So we're getting there um, tonight around like nine. And then tomorrow is like the whole like prep day. I think we're, we're doing like content and stuff and we have uh, some scrims. Um, so we're getting to Dallas uh, two days. Well, two days. We're getting there a day before yeah. the tournament, basically. And um, I mean, we're, we've all been boot camping in, at Winthrop in NA. So it's not like... Um, some of the teams like uh, SSG and Ents who are going to be getting here an actual day before the tournament. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're fortunate for that. And then I want to ask as well, because you've got quite an experienced team, Overwatch League players across for, across for pool and obviously multiple years on a lot of players as well. But for you yourself, will this be your first major LAN event or will this be the biggest event so far? Yeah. Um... I mean, honestly, the only lands I've played out have been collegiate, and like those really don't have any like pressure. Um, so yeah, this is actually going to be my first uh, like major playing on an actual stage in, in front of probably a pretty big crowd. So that's definitely uh, something I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Have you talked to many of the other players about it, or like with their experiences on stage or anything like that, or you just going no. in with an open mind? Uh, I mean, I don't want to say I think like I know what to expect. I mean, like I'm probably going to get nervous up there. And then like once I, you know, play uh, the Crazy Raccoons match, I'll probably like settle in during the match. I uh, haven't really asked anyone. Um, it's just I think it's something I'm probably pretty open minded to just going to go there and try and play my best and uh, have a good time. Yeah, I think most people, when they talk about it, they talk about maybe like the first map or the first five, ten minutes is a little bit like nerves and no, I'm here. But then there's normally like a sort of settling in period where you feel like, oh, okay, I can I can just focus on the game and we can play normal again now. Yeah. And I also think that my situation is like actually better for me because like I'm playing every like I'm playing against arguably the best team in the game. It's like between them and Falcons, I'd say. And, um, like, at least, you know, the, like, the, I can tell myself or like, everybody's expecting Crazy Raccoons to win. So it takes a lot of the pressure off me. Like, I can't imagine like someone going there, like, for example, like Toronto, like this is, I think this will be Vegas first time as well. So, you know, they probably have more pressure on themselves to win. So, you know, um, his, I think his situation, my situation, let can like ease my mind more Mm. just be like listen nobody's nobody's expecting us to win just got to go out there play my best and you know that's that's all you can do cheese them a little bit play some pharaoh yeah well i think we i certainly experienced this in my time at london and i'm sure you did on valiant as well where actually being the underdog makes going into the matches way easier and then if you ever get that momentum it can really snowball yeah like m80 was like one of the first teams besides like being on isu when i won contenders like lethal and rinko was like the first time in a long time where i've kind of felt like when i go into a match i'm expected to win like we are expected to beat every single team besides like toronto not saying that we shouldn't beat them but like going into toronto we know like it's going to be dog fights it's not just like they should just fall over and we should win but like almost every other team in na is like we are expected to beat so um and yeah being on valiant <laughs> i mean two and two and 14 so you know going in like yeah i was actually talking to seeker about this the other day and ranked he's like you you don't for you or you forget how good it was on valiant even though we were losing we were getting paid <laughs> we we're the underdogs like like you forget how the good golden the, years the, 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 go, the golden days of, of valiant um so yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, if we lose first round, we'll be playing Twisted Minds. Then I think maybe some of that pressure will come back of us beating them, especially with um, both their DPS um, piece issues. So, Yeah, that one, that one should be a little bit more of a, more of a yeah. straightforward one. Yeah. And then, so we talked a bit about the Crazy Raccoons match already, and obviously they're quite a big team, but is there any other team you're particularly looking forward to playing or any team you really want to beat 
That's going to be at the event. Um, I mean, I'd love to play students of the game just to like <laughs> have like the the NA match. Um, but outside of like having a fun match, I mean, I'd, I actually really want to play SSG. Um, I mean, it, the London core playing against them on Valiant all the time. Like, I'd love to have like uh like i guess like a rematch against them and then also toronto i mean like if we got to play toronto on land and beat them like honestly that would be the best feeling ever but um you know we'll have to see i'm not sure how like the bracket uh is like turns out but honestly any like top team i just want to like play against the best yeah no i think that's a good mentality to have Thank you very much, Laya. I do appreciate your time. And obviously, best of luck to you and the team and safe travels. And we'll see you on the weekend. All right. Thank you.